Welcome to Power Charting. I'm Bruce Frazier, your host. And this episode is going to be devoted to managing bull market uptrends. And it's a case study, but it's a case study with a purpose. Our intention in this effort today is to hone our skills, develop our abilities to be able to handle what we think is coming next in the markets. And so with that in mind, uh, let's move on. We have a lot to do. So we're going to focus on what Dr. Pruden called the case study method. And uh, for, gosh, more than almost 40 years, Dr. Pruden has uh, immersed me in the principles of using case study method for analyzing uh, market, market situations, and so on, with the idea that these case studies can help develop us for future scenarios, future situations that are similar to the ones that we studied in the case study. This is the reason why I write the blog the way I do. I write the blog with, I put lots of notes on the blogs. Uh, some people don't like that I put a lot of notes on the blogs, but uh, on these charts, but the purpose of that is so that you and I can go back at a later date and review the thinking that went into the analysis and also be able to see our real time focus and what we were doing, how we were analyzing and making sure that we were being consistent with the Wyckoff methodology. So this is what we're gonna do today. And uh, I believe that uh, Dr. Pruden was very wise in using this, which was a derivative of the Harvard case study method, which he, uh, you know, refocus towards uh, stock market analysis. Brilliant stuff. So uh, today we are going to use, do a real live, real time case study analysis, and I'll explain what I mean by that, on how to manage uptrends. So with that, uh, let's move on and we will uh, look at the second turn of the uh, bull market. But first, an announcement. Uh, Alex Ivanov has done a wonderful uh, webinar on the Dow Theory methodology, well received, and the beauty of it is, is that you can now see it on demand. So go to tsaasf.org, and uh, it's right on the homepage. It's free for everybody to watch, and then Alex is going to be doing a Dow Theory in Action webinar that is going to be during market hour. So it's gonna be live analysis on July 19th, and this is a member event, but everybody should be a member of the TSAA. Not-for-profit organization devoted to uh, education and technical analysis, a great organization. So please check it out and just go watch the free video, which uh, I think you're gonna enjoy a lot. Now, this chart goes back to the recent blog that I did on the razor's edge. And so this is going to be all um, engaged or related to uh, the recent blog and also videos that I've done. And you can see here that this represents the bull market going back to 2009 and the low there. And you can see that there's this uh, really uh, well-formed uptrend channel that has been in operation, and we can see three uh, potential, well, three consolidations here that are outlined in yellow, and the current one, which uh, is almost of the same duration as the prior two. Well, what our job today is going to be is to look at the area from this second consolidation reaccumulation structure and what, look at it and at how it unfolded and then how it moved into an uptrend and then ultimately the uh, current reaccumulation, potential reaccumulation structure that we are in now. And the thing that you can see in the prior video that I did is that we can see that the financial condition of the economy 
over this period of time has been relatively stable. It's been becoming more, a little stronger GDP growth. Unemployment has been dropping. We're reaching full employment, but inflation has been very stable. Interest rates are still very low. Generally, when we see interest rates rising, it shows us that there's tightness in the economy. And that's something that the Fed will start to worry about. We're not seeing evidence of that at this point. And so that suggests that the potential for a continuation of the bull market uptrend is uh, very real, has great uh, potential to keep going. So let's uh, consider that. Here's the current market situation. This is the uptrend going back to 2016 on a weekly chart. This is what we're going to look at together here and this uptrend. But notice that we have another structure here that has the potential to be a large reaccumulation. It's backed up. We talked about this in the prior video, so I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time on it, and also the blog. And now we're jumping out, and as of today on the 10th of July, we actually touched 3,000 on the S&P. Pretty exciting. So are we about to move from a trading range reaccumulation structure into a new uptrend. Interesting. Okay. Well, first we have to go back to the beginning of the bull market, which is this period. This is a very large point and figure chart, and uh, I'd love for you to be able to develop your uh, skills and your chops at being able to do these. This is five box reversal, which is like akin to a monthly chart. Uh, ATR scaling, so each one of these is 88.75 Dow Jones points. This was a brilliant analysis that Hank did back in the day. We talked about this a lot in class. And uh, here you can see this an original count that he published in a uh, publication, uh, Active Trader, one of those, it was a magazine, and at the time, nobody believed that what he was uh, making the call on was even remotely possible, and this is a count that goes down to uh, 81.69 Dow points on the uh, count line, and then from the low, it's uh, 64.78, and so you can see here that at this uh, 81.29 or um, 81.65 area that he was making the case for a run up to 19,258, 17,572. Now this is a recalculation that I've done, but it's very close to his. And, uh, and then what I did is I widened the count in a blog post that was done later on. And so you can see, and I'll show you how to do this, but down here, point figure pie in the sky. Just go to the July 22nd, 2016 blog, and you can get this chart. You can paste it out of the blog. You can put it into your own documents or whatever so that you can keep track of them. So this is a crazy count. Nobody believed it at the time, and uh, now it's uh, kind of ho-hum. Well, here's a vertical chart of this whole area, and notice here's the count. Here's Hank's count, 19.2. 17.6. So you can see our count is very, very close to that. And what happened? We went to this area right here and went into a large reaccumulation structure. So interesting. Well, now this is the second turn that occurred in this bull run. Here is the first turn right here, which we uh, one day may do an analysis for a blog on. But at this point, we want to focus on this and look what happened. This gave us a point and figure count, which we're going to look at in a second for higher prices. And also notice when we widened out our point and figure count, which you saw in the prior slide, it gave us a much higher count. Uh, and this all was generated at the uh, in the base of the original accumulation area of the point and figure uh, in 2009-10. So uh, let's move on. We have a lot to do here. So uh, with this in mind, here is a point and figure count. So here's the base. Here's 2010 right here. 2009 is over here. We can't see it all. 
We can see it in that earlier chart. And you can see, here's the count that I just showed you. It was off of the base. This was a Hank's initial count. Oh, and look what we get, a beautiful rally up into a climax, reaccumulation structure that forms over a long period of time. And this is, again, this is a very large point figure, five box reversal method, 163.22 box size calculated by the average true range method, which is in the point figure engine that we use. So this is a very, these are very large uh, counts in here in the scaling. And look what it gives us. Now, I tend to count conservatively. And so there is a larger count that we can turn to, and uh, I will show you an example of that later. But this count, which at the time we were at um, 18607 at that time, right here, 18607 is right where we were jumping out of the reaccumulation structure. And so we were making the case at that time, real time in the blog, for a count that could go 22,850 up to 24,483. So a pretty big move we're making a case for at that time. So here is, now this is a slightly, you'll see here that uh, we have different scaling and so on over here. Let's see, where are we? Right here. So you can see this is five box reversal, 150 point scaling. It gave us slightly different numbers, but it's the same count. So 22,200 up to uh, 23,850. You can see, look what happened. When we jumped out, this is where we did our July blog post. This is where it jumped out. And look at this beautiful big wall that we had that developed after that. There was not a single pullback. Now, this would be five points or more uh, in that point and figure analysis. Pretty impressive move. Well, then we get into this area. We'll look at this. We are into an overbought condition on the trend line analysis that we did right on the point and figure chart. This was more pie, bigger sky, June 17th, 2017. It's almost a year later. In a run, this runs right up to the uh, trend line and then consolidates and has its first pullback. Well, that is this area over here because we chunk size down into smaller time frames. And this is an important point that we're making is that when you uh, are managing uptrends. You want to look at the big time frames, the big trends, the big point figure counts, five box reversal, etc. But you also want to chunk down into smaller time frames, smaller size. And in this case, this is a three box reversal method, <clears throat> and we're using standard 50 point scaling. So this is the scaling is a third of the chart on the left, and it's three box reversal instead of five. So you're going to get more detail. Well, look what that gets us. Here's a pause. Now, this is the big wall that we just looked at right here on the chart on the left. Here's a pause, which has just a pause. There's no pullback in this, which is actually quite bullish. And then this consolidates into another important move up. This is all part of that one wall that we looked at on the left. Then as we got into the rising trend channel that we saw over here, we had a, a consolidation. And this is a reaccumulation on a smaller scale. This was put into this blog in real time. And we said at the time in the blog, when we jumped out of here at around this 21,150 area, well, it actually at the time was 21,761 uh, was at the, at the point of the point of the analysis of the point figure in the blog, is that we were making the case for two counts uh, here, a smaller conservative count, 22,350, 22,550, and then a larger count. 22,950, 23,500, 
Well, get this. Look at the uh, um, the confirmation structure here that we had, where we had on the chart on the left 23,850, and now on a smaller reaccumulation point figure count, we have 23,500. Pretty darn close. That's a a confirming count, and so that confirming count tells us that we should expect that when they approximately eat, meet each other in terms of the extent of the move, that's a t great timing tool for when these two reaccumulation structures should start to resolve into a new uptrend. So as soon as we got this count right here at this pullback to uh, 2950, right there is when we generated the 23500 count matching the 23850 count roughly and that's a great timing tool for when the uptrend is about to begin again and that's exactly what happened okay so now here's this chart again with this count of 24 483 22850 right here which is roughly in the area of this reaccumulation that we had this is the 2016 turn right here and then now this is what happened subsequently so we completed that count, we went into the uptrend, and I wanna just point out here that in this uptrend, we had, let's put this right here. These, this is the uptrend that we analyzed with the reaccumulation counts, reaccumulation count here and here, and these counts were giving us a run upward. Well, this is into the end of 2017. This whole area, this, this entire period of 2017 really was, had tremendous climactic qualities to it. And so it just went and went and went upward and then accelerated towards the end. Now this is into December. This is the, as a matter of fact, go back and look at this blog, December 10th, 2017. And we're saying the, the Dow Industrials is becoming climactic. Now, this climax went into mid-January, but we were making the case that we're reaching our point and figure objectives. Look, 24,329, 24,483 was our objective. We don't want to get in the way of this, but we want to recognize that we're fulfilling our counts. We also always recognize that uh, climaxes can go further than we think. So here's our count again over here uh, done it in this December 10th blog again pointing to this 24483 objective and at the time we were saying hey we've hit it so we're in the final stages of something here well it did go a lot higher and here is chunk sizing in further now we're into intraday data and so this intraday data this is a 30 minute chart right here and we're using three box reversal method. And uh, we did a box size of 20. We often do that where we'll round out, we'll look at the ATR scaling, and then we'll say, okay, let's round to a round number. So ATR scaling might've been 21.63 or something, who knows. But we will round it to the round number. And here we can see there's a beautiful reaccumulation structure. And this is occurring from October into the end of November of 2017. And so this was a uh, blog we did on January 13th, which was very near the high for the market in 2018 in the climax. And you can see the climax occurring, but we always expect a cause, which is a point figure reaccumulation, to precede or an accumulation to precede an effect, which is a markup or a markdown. And so we can see that happening here on the 30 minute. Well, notice this. Now we go down, this is five minute data. So we're looking at a classic reaccumulation structure on the five minute data, and this is in December. So in here, this area right here produces a reaccumulation on a smaller scale. Here's 30 minute data, here's five minute data, and we run up and look at this. 
look at the how these two counts confirm each other. So here, this one on the 30-minute data, 25, 140, 25, 420, tells us that this is where this is expected to go. Five-minute data, this objective area over here, right here is this area here. And this count takes us 25, 678, 25, 726. And so they more or less confirm. You never get perfection, they get close. You just, and notice how when the five minute chart had a count of equal extent as the 30 minute chart, it, it went from being in the reaccumulation into the uptrend. And so this is a uh, terrific timing tool. This is just for Wyckoffians. We don't share this with anybody. This is for the Wyckoff nation. So here we are. We're getting into smaller and smaller and smaller time periods in our analysis. And look at how all roads lead to Rome here, which is the area that was counted in the original base count back in 2008-2009 uh, and into 2010. So here's a uh, two-hour vertical chart. This is the lower reaccumulation structure, and we can see how beautiful it is. It has all the elements of reaccumulation, forms, produces a spring, and then has a series of backups in a rising trend out of the area and into a new uptrend. And here is our smaller reaccumulation that we counted on the five-minute data. And here you can see we blew this up into, uh, this is 60 minute uh, vertical. And here we have all the elements in a smaller time period here. And they both, we saw that they both pointed to higher prices. Well, here we are. Now remember that number, we I think had 25,700 was the high count that we had. And I'll let you go back and look, but look here. This is right about this area right here. So there's a climactic surge. This is into late January. This is where the uh, climax occurred. Everything we saw prior to that all had reaccumulation structures, beautiful uptrends, beautiful trend lines. Here you can see a trend line analysis that goes back to an earlier period. And this is a uh, February 19th blog. And then all of a sudden, down, down, down goes the market into an important markdown. And this was the beginning of the range bound market that we had beginning in 2018 and has been going on for 18 months ever since. So here's our buying climax with an up thrust. This is a uh, 60 minute chart, beautiful distribution structure here that's occurred on this chart on the left. And then on the right, we count it. So the count did not get us all the way down to the lows, but what it did do is it told us that lower prices were expected. That's a pretty big decline going from 26,600 uh, down to 24,831. And it's saying to us that we've used up all the count in the uptrend. These counts go back to 2016. Uh, the uh, the reaccumulation that's occurred from 2016 onward has been exhausted from point figure counts, et cetera. So now here we are with the uh, 20, uh, the three turns that we talked about earlier. And so here is the second turn we analyzed in a very large time frame. We analyzed the base here and the counts. Then we analyze the second reaccumulation area here in different time frames going from five box reversal to three to intraday. And we analyze those all the way up. And these counts just kept confirming, 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 going into the area of the, uh, the 18 month consolidation that we're in now. It gave us a great objective for a climax it gave us a reaction we've been in a range bound condition ever since and so here we are with a uh, situation where we potentially are going to resolve this as a, as a reaccumulation 
or distribution for a move down. Here we are right on this very long-term uptrend channel that we had uh, the first anchor point in 2011. So can the bull market uptrend continue? That's the big question for us. And so we turn now to the, um, the uh, vertical chart. This is the area that we analyzed. Again, we looked at this earlier. So here's where our point figure count was along here. We counted uh, this upward. Uh, we took reaccumulation counts along the way. There was one here. Smaller time frames. They pointed up into this buying climax. The buying climax overthrew all of our counts, but then failed dramatically. And so now we have a range bound market, which we analyzed and have been talking about since the beginning of 2018. As soon as we had the buying climax and the automatic reaction, we said this is a range bound condition. Now we're looking at the S&P, not the Dow. But uh, then we had this uh, up thrust here and a, uh, a big shakeout. And now look what's happened. We've had another run up to another new high. We pulled back less than halfway and we put in what arguably is a last point of support and a backup. And then today we've touched 3,000 on, on the Dow, on the Dow and well, 3,000 on the S&P. And we have uh, a market that is uh, an economy that's not overheated. We have a Fed that is attempting to be accommodative uh, this looks pretty compelling. But now, finally, we're doing what we did back in 2016, which was we took this base count, reaccumulation count here, segment A, and it counted up. Now we're counting in the S&P. Well, this count took us to 3140, 2960. We went to 2940. So we missed it by one box on the point and figure. And uh, this structure has been building a count. We are interpreting this as a bullish count. We must be careful because this could be an up thrust after distribution. And we will know in short order if this turns back down into the structure. Uh, this will be a, a very important warning for us that uh, stock is being sold at new highs here. So uh, this is something we are literally on the edge. We're on the turn right now. But notice this, I'm about to run out of time. We have a count here that goes 3620 to 4000. Well, look at this. We stretched this count here from 2016 20, back to 2014. It gives us a confirming count, 3800, 3980. And as soon as we uh, created that count, again, confirming count, Look what happens. We're starting to move up and out. Again, the timing tool we were talking about earlier. So with vertical charts and point and figure charts, we can uh, continue to manage with Wyckoffian techniques and methods the uptrend. It will continue to tell us where it wants to go. We need to look in all time frames. We need to look from the largest time frames to the smallest time frames. And uh, this will keep us on track in the uptrend and tell us when trends are beginning and ending and when they're going to confirm. With that, we are done. We will talk more about this in the future. But thank you so much for being here. And thank you for all your kind comments. And we'll see you again uh, soon.